Thank you for joining us for God's Word for the Modern World, New Beginning Baptist Church's Adult Sunday School class. Just, uh, I don't know how much you guys follow the news. Uh, I, I personally don't like watching the national news anymore. Uh, it's just so full of hatred and lies and everything else. Uh, but I do look at some sources on the internet. Uh, Christian Broadcast News has a website that has some information. And, uh, One American News, I look at that sometimes and just kind of look at headlines mostly. But every once in a while, we'll look at an article. But there's a couple that hit me this week. You know, Satan, I think, is trying to use this coronavirus to. maybe uh, push forward his agenda a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe personally yeah. that his agenda is to destroy America because yeah. God loves it. Uh, and used it in the past and he wants to make sure that he destroys it so it can't be used in the future. Well, what, a couple of things I noticed. Uh, one was, you know, there was an article about China and how there's a real crackdown in China right now against the churches, yes. especially even the home churches. They're arresting pastors, closing them down. They don't want anything. Then I read another article about uh, the law being, or uh, edict being put out that uh, churches couldn't meet. You certainly couldn't sing even meeting in homes for Bible study has been outlawed. That wasn't China. That was California. Oh, wow. That was California. Wow. Okay, and, and one of the churches there is, is, you know, got a lawsuit now out saying that that's unconstitutional. But, having said that, I read another article. Supreme Court just ruled against a church in Nevada. They brought a lawsuit because Nevada said you couldn't have more than 50 people at your church. Yet the casinos can run at 50% yeah. capacity. Yeah. And they said, what's well, discrimination against the church? Yeah. You're saying that a casino, yeah. <laughs> okay, who probably you know, is not going to do the social distancing, probably not going to enforce these, etc., can run at 50% capacity. That's thousands of people. <laughs> Yet you're restricting churches to 50. And the Supreme Court of the United States of America said, oh, that's fine. Wow. Well, it's because of the Corinthian question. Five against four. Okay. But it's all right to see. Point is, okay, there's things that are going on we don't know about. I believe Satan's got a agenda that he's pushing right now so that at appropriate time he can come more and more and more against the churches. That's my personal belief. Okay? And you can see it. Little things like that in the news. Okay? Satan's using this. Okay? As, just like he's using other things to cause rioting and, and so he always uses something else right? something that maybe sounds good and we'll get into this probably if not today next week you know, that's part of Satan's wiles right? what he likes to do right? he'll take something and then hide behind it and make it evil something that sounds good right? So we just need to be aware that the spiritual warfare that's going on, we need the power of God to move to counter all this. We also know that God is sovereign. We tend, you know, we look at these things. If we're not careful, we fall back into that. What was us? And what are we going to do? Yeah. You know, the devil is taking control of everything, but we got to remember when Satan is raging like he is now, 
God is still sovereign. That has cha never changed and never will change. God is all powerful. God is all knowing. Right? And God is sovereign. Nothing is going to happen that's not according to His ultimate plan. And we just have to believe God, believe His precious word, that He's going to work it all to good and glory. So as we start thinking a little bit more about last week, uh, and we were talking about the first thing that he mentions in these scriptures there in Ephesians chapter 6, is that we need to be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. That's verse 10. Strong in the Lord in the power of his might. It has nothing to do with us. Huh? If we try to stand in our power, we're going to fail. If we try, try to stand in our might, we're going to find out we don't have much. Right? Uh, it's got to be in God's power. And we looked at, you know, he reminds us there in the next verse that we've got to put on the whole power, the whole armor of God. And we looked at verses last week. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, that the weapons are not carnal, but mighty of God. We looked at Corinthians 4, 7, and it says, you know, we're reminded that we have this message, the glorious gospel of light that we share, but it's in earthen vessels. In other words, we don't have any might in which we can stand in. We have to stand in the Lord in the power of His might. And it says, the reason God uses that, uses people to share the gospel, is so that the excellency of the power is of God. It becomes obvious that we as men are not able, but God is able to do all according to His will. We then got to Ephesians chapter 1. Now let's turn back there, Ephesians chapter 1. Okay. And uh, down in verse 15, we, we were reminded that uh, Paul, talking to the Ephesians, said that you know, when he had heard of their faith in the Lord Jesus and the love of the saints, he ceased not to give thanks, making mention of them in his prayers. He says that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what riches of the riches of, of the glory of His inheritance of the saints. And that, uh, and what is the Exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and, and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in uh, that which is to come, and have put all things under his feet, and gave to him to be head over the things of the, to the church, which is the body, the fullness of him that fulfilleth all in all, uh, all in all. Think about what he's saying here. He's talking about the exceeding, right? <clears throat> verse 19, the exceeding greatness of his power to us word, who believe according to the working of his mighty power. It's, and we mentioned this last week, it's by God's power that we receive the Spirit. That helps us understand and see. That's what he's talking about at the very beginning. Understanding and being enlightened. Right? 
And we start understanding the hope of our calling. And we understand that the calling is the ministry of reconciliation. And it's all according to God's power. Notice what he said in verse 22. Put all things under his feet, speaking of Jesus, and gave unto him head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. That's why over here in, in Ephesians chapter 6, 10, it says to be strong in the Lord. We as Christians are in Christ, and Christ is head of the church. He says, we have all fullness in Him. And remember, in Him, as he says, we'll look at this in verse 12 over there in Ephesians 6, he reminds us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. What do we wrestle against? principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Well, who is over all that? Yeah, we know Satan is using all that. But what does he say in verse 21? He says, Jesus is far above principalities and power and might and dominion. Jesus is far above that. God is in control. God is sovereign. We have to learn to just stand in His power. Stand in Christ. Because if we don't, we won't stand. We will fail. That's why it's the very first thing He mentions. So this whole idea of putting on the, the whole armor of God is to remember that it's God's armor. And it's only effective in spiritual warfare as we stand in the Lord and let God in His might work things. There in Ephesians chapter 2, he goes on and he talks about the same thing but puts it in a little bit different terms. Down in verse, uh, verse 8, he says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. That's part of this exceeding, okay, greatness of his power. He helps us to see and accept by his grace, through faith, we have salvation. But, he says, verse 9 reminds us again, it's not of works, lest any man should boast. When we talk about the armor of God and putting it on and, and standing in the Lord and his might, it has nothing to do with our abilities or our works. It is God's power. His power to save us. And then look verse 10. We are His, what? Workmanship. His workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Unto good works which God hath ordained that we should walk in them. The ministry of reconciliation that was left to us is a good work. It has all kinds of aspects to it, right? We talk about all kinds of other ministries, like the food ministry. Those are good works. But the ultimate purpose of all the ministries is the ministry of reconciliation. It's to show the world so that then they can hear the gospel and understand. I read another article that, according to a, a, a poll that they take annually, 68%, which is a huge increase, over the, the last 10 years, it's been every year a decline in the number of adults that was interested in the Bible. <coughs> this year, it's jumped up to 68%. Show some interest in the Bible. Why? Because it says they're seeing that it's the churches that have stepped in and helped a lot of people. Amen. I mean, it really helped in lots of ways. Emotional support, 
food ministries there because people were running out of food, right? Other things that churches have done, so people are starting to say, hey, I need to at least look into this a little bit. So it's a great opportunity for the churches, and that's really what the article is about. Opportunity right now to go out and evangelize and share the gospel, speak to people. Because that's what he's talking about in verse 10. But notice again, it's his workmanship, so it's according to his might, and it's in Christ Jesus. So as we are strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So we saw, see also that, you know, again, this idea that power is there first to save us, but then also to help us stand in the ministry of reconciliation. In 2 Timothy, turn to 2 Timothy. Get my fingers to work. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. These are familiar scriptures, but he says, Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. According to the power of God. He says, Don't be ashamed of the testimony. You know, continue to witness. Continue to tell people that Jesus saves. Share the gospel. Okay? Don't be ashamed of it ever. Because it's being done according to the power of God. It's the power of God. Remember, over there in Romans, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it's the power of God unto salvation. But it's also the power of God unto works. The ministry of reconciliation. He says, Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. God knew before the world began that he was going to use those that are saved to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But it was still going to be through His power in Christ. That's how it's done. Okay? He says, verse uh, 10, But it is now made manifest by the appearing of our Lord uh, uh, Savior Jesus Christ, whom hath abolished death and hath brought to life and immortality to light through the gospel. That's how God okay has called us to a holy calling is to share that gospel okay but it's according to his power in Christ. If we do it any other way it's not going to be effective. That's what if we do it any other way we're going to fall prey to the wiles of the devil. If we do it any other way, we're going to fail. That's what he's saying here. He's reminding Timothy. Okay? That we're going to be partakers of the affliction, too. Right? We have been spoiled children of God in America. I think there was spots of persecution early on in American history, okay? Because Satan's always hated, especially Baptist preachers, <laughs> okay, and Baptists, okay? Because I believe that's because they're, they're, if I believe something else, I'd be some other denomination. I believe they're closest to being a biblical church. So hate, Satan hates them. But he says, you're going to be partakers of the affliction. I personally believe if God doesn't change things, and we talked about it earlier on here today, 
that the church may be heading for some real persecution. We may actually, us spoiled children, may actually face some real persecution. What, what, are, they gonna, what are we going to do okay, when the Supreme Court says, oh, our ruling that you can't discriminate against the LBGTQ community, and I think I missed a letter in there somewhere. You can't discriminate it anywhere, including churches. It's heading, that way. it's heading that way. That's their goal, by the way. That's one of their stated goals. Is to silence fundamental churches. So what are we going to do? Okay. I don't know. I don't know where it'll go, what we'll do. We'll look to the Lord and follow whatever guidance He has for us. But real persecution may come. That's what He's saying here. Jesus promised it. Right? So we shouldn't be surprised. In this world, we'll have tribulation. Isn't that what He promised? Is it be a good cheer? Why? Because He's overcome the world. Why? Because we read it just a little while ago. He's over principalities and powers and dominions. Jesus, our Lord, is still Lord. He's in charge. God is still sovereign. He's in charge. We need to stand strong in Him. Right? Isn't that what Ephesians 6 says? Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. So we see it's not just for our salvation, but it's also for our service. Right? So that we can live the gospel and then share the gospel. So we see that that's the very first thing he reminds us of. Right? Now remember, what we're talking about is the power of God. And we saw it. it, it we're his workmanship. He says... We have the power, okay, so that we can share the gospel. Jesus himself, one of the last things he said before he went to heaven was what? Ye shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Why? He also included the why. It wasn't so that we could live without any troubles in this world. It wasn't that we would always have great faith and, and always be up and full of joy regardless of what happened. It, it helps in those things. But that, he says, you're going to receive power that you can be witnesses. When he's talking here, over here in Ephesians chapter 10, to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might, we need to understand that this spiritual warfare is about standing and being strong and continuing on in the ministry of reconciliation, which is the sharing of the glorious light of the gospel. That's what it's all about. So as we get into these other pieces of armor, I've been struggling a little bit with it. You, you look at, and there's some wonderful pictures, I guess, in, in this armor. Most of us, practically most of us, don't know really the practical application of this armor in a military situation these days. Right? But there's a, a overriding, if you will, purpose <coughs> in this armor. And it's not that we can be strong and defeat these enemies. Most of the armor is for our defense so that we can, as he's going to say here shortly, and we're going to get into the next verse, verse 11, okay? He says, put on the whole armor of God. For what reason? that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He wants us to be able to stand 
our purpose in life is to have the ministry of reconciliation. To be effective in that, we have to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. In, in a few verses, that he talks about standing. There's lots of, if you look, do a word search on stand, there's lots of verses. Okay? But notice what he says that in 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 13, he says, Watch ye, stand fast in faith, quit ye like men, be strong. And that word quit was one of those English words that has changed meaning over time. The old English, which is the King James Bible written, quit means is to be. Okay? What he's saying there in that phrase, quit you like men, is said, stand up and be strong like men. <laughs> huh? And that's what we need to be able to stand. But notice what the first word was. Watch. He says, watch ye. We need to be aware of what's going on. We need to be, like he says, Understanding of the wiles of the devil so that we can stand. Personal comment here. So, this armor we're going to be talking about, as I was trying to say a little while ago, isn't so that we can put Satan in his place. <laughs> Somehow I'm going to defeat Satan. Scriptures tell us that Michael the Archangel didn't bring rail and accusations against Satan. He said, the Lord rebuke you. Which takes us back to what we just finished studying. Standing in Christ in the might of his power. This armor is not about us defeating Satan. And we'll see later. You know, if Satan runs away, it's not because we have the armor on it. <laughs> It's because of the power of God, and he says, oh, I'm not going to waste my time here for now. <laughs> Guess what? He'll be back later. Okay. So we need to remember that. We need to be watching, making sure we have the armor on so that we can stand and be strong. And that's the only way we can. Is in his might. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have grace, a peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith unto this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. It is we stand in God's grace, right? in His power, through our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, stand. He, in first Corinthians, no, second Corinthians chapter one, he says, "For all the promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him Amen, unto the glory of God by us." Now He which established us with you in Christ, and hath anointed us in God, who hath sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Moreover. I call God for a record unto my soul that to uh, spare you I uh, came not to just uh, not uh, yet unto Corinthian. Not for that we have dominion over your faith, but we are helpers in your joy for your faith ye stand. For in your faith ye stand. Or by your faith ye stand. It's by your faith you stand. Where does the faith come from? It comes from God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the power of God. It is Jesus and God who is the Amen. Right. Did anybody start out by saying the promises of God are yea and amen. The promises of God never change. The promise of God will come about. Our faith in God is through Jesus Christ who is that Amen. Right? He said we stand in that faith. That's how we stand in the power of Jesus Christ. 
Philippians, one more and then we'll, we'll have to stop. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. Only let your conversations be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. And see you, or else be absent. I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And in nothing terrifying by your adversaries, which is to them an evidence of token of perdition, but unto you of salvation that, uh, and that of God. What does he say in there in verse 27? He says, it's, we need to stand in faith. Okay? The faith of the gospel. The gospel, the entire word of God is what he's talking about. We stand in the gospel, in Jesus Christ, in his power, right? And we not only stand there, but we walk there every day, right? We, we have our conversation, that's the way we walk every day, as become of the gospel of Christ. We share the gospel we have. But look at verse 28. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, we stand as we share the gospel, regardless of what the adversary tries to throw at us. We stand in the power of God, okay? And we should take comfort in knowing, because, look what he says, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries. We're out there sharing the gospel. Satan comes against us. That's part of the spiritual warfare. He says, which is to them an evidence of their perdition. In other words, when they come against you, it's just evidence that they're not saved. Right? And it's an evidence of your salvation. And that, that salvation is of God. Because the adversary is not coming against us because he hates you. He does. But he doesn't hate you because of you. He hates you because you're in Christ. And he hates God. He hates Christ. Therefore, he hates you. If you're saved. So he says... When that happens, when you're suffering for the gospel's sake, that's just evidence that God has saved you. And we need to rejoice in that. That's why in other scriptures, Paul talks about that, rejoicing in tribulation. Right? Why? Because that's just evidence that we're saved and they're not. They need the gospel. So the spiritual warfare isn't about destroying the enemy. It's about sharing the gospel so that those that are being used by the enemy might get saved and not be any longer children of perdition. But now, translated, become children of God. Because that's what we did. That's what happened to us. Right? That's what happened to us. That's the purpose of God's armor. That's what he means by standing. And that, that word stand, and then the, I understand from studying it a little bit, that that word really means it's not a one-time act. It's a continual act of standing continually. Because the warfare never goes away. It never stops. So we need to be strong in the Lord and power of His might, put on that whole armor of God to be able to stand continually. In, in other places in the scripture it says to be steadfast, right? That's unmovable. The only way we can do that is in His might, His might by putting on the whole armor. So next week we're going to look a little bit about this, okay? <clears throat> We're standing against the wiles of the devil. What does that really mean? The devil has methods he uses. They haven't really changed since the beginning. Right? And that, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the, the word uh, wiles, 
means methods, but it also implies that in those methods there's trickery. I like that. Okay? And there's deceit and lying. But there's also a connotation that those methods are also lying in wait. Satan's sly. And we'll get into this next week. He is very sly. He is willing to wait for the right time, okay, to start bringing in the lies. Yeah. The right time yeah. to start deceiving. He'll lie and wait. So that's part of those lies. It's a method that he has. He lies and waits. Then he shares his lies and he starts the deception. He starts the seduction. So we'll talk about that next week. Amen. Thank you for joining us for God's Word for the Modern World, New Beginning Baptist Church's Adult Sunday School class.